टुडे माय टॉपिक ऑफ प्रेजेंटेशन इज यूज ऑफ फाइटोबायोटिक्स एज एन अल्टरनेटिव टू कंटेन एंटी माइक्रोबियल रेजिस्टेंस इन स्मॉल रूमिनेंट्स एज ऑल ऑफ us we are aware that anti microbial resistance it is a worldwide pandemic and is a matter of public health concern use of phytobiotics or phytochemicals is one of the strategies which we will be discussing in today's presentation as an alternative to contain anti microbial resistance in small ruminants according to 20th uh, 20th census india's rank third position in sheep and second position in goat and it contributes approximately 74.26 million and for goat it contributes around 148.88 million so as we know that small ruminants uh, uh, like sheep and goat their farming is a neglected sector and they are highly susceptible to various infectious diseases like bacterial diseases viral diseases fungal diseases and parasitic infection so the main aim of any antibiotic treatment is either to prevent these diseases or to have its therapeutic management so what does i mean by therapeutic management therapeutic management it means that we can use antimicrobial agents for the successful treatment of various infectious diseases of both sheep and goat so this slide i have presented a overview simple overview of antimicrobials so let us know what exactly we mean by antimicrobials so antimicrobials these are the substances which may be either natural synthetic semi or semi synthetic in origin and mostly they are used to kill or suppress the growth of microbes so these antimicrobials they may be classified into various categories like antibiotics which we call as antibacterials antivirals antifungals and antiparasitics this antibiotics which we are talking about and that too we are going to discuss about antimicrobial resistance actually they are used to prevent the growth of bacteria whereas antivirals are used against viruses antifungals against the spores of fungus antiparasites against both both endo and ectoparasites now as i have discussed that antimicrobials they are the medicines which are used to prevent or treat the infections which are caused by microorganisms in human beings animals or plants so we can say that all antibiotics they are antimicrobials because all antibiotics they are synthetic in nature whereas antimicrobials they may be natural synthetic or semi synthetic in nature so all antimicrobials they are not antibiotic whereas all antibiotics they are antimicrobials now let us see about the classification of antibiotics there are so many classifications which almost all of us will be knowing but this classification which i have presented here is according to ema that is european medicine agency so according to european medicine agency they have categorized the antibiotics into four categories so the main aim of them to categorize these antibiotics into four categories is to promote the judicious use of antibiotics whether it is in human beings or in animals so according to ema they have classified this antibiotics into four categories that is a b c and d so here a stands for avoid that means the antibiotics which comes under this category they are unauthorized to be used in veterinary practices these agents or this class of antibiotics they cannot be used in food producing animals like sheep and goat whereas b stands for restrict group of antibiotics it means these antibiotics they are of critical importance in human beings but they are not at all used in animal their use is restricted until and unless when it is uh, to mitigate a condition which are of public health concern the third category is c category of antibiotics which stands for caution that means this group of antibiotics antibiotics we have to use very cautiously these group of antibiotics they actually they are intended for veterinary use but this group of antibiotics why we need to use cautiously because group d antibiotics when they fail to respond when the microorganism fails to respond to the group d of antibiotics then we need to proceed for the group c category of antibiotics 
whereas group d category of antibiotics it uh, we can say they belongs uh, they are called as prudence because the, these group of drugs or antibiotics they are the first line of treatment in veterinary practices and they should be used prudently so here we can see the categories of various uh, antibiotics uh, so a category it includes ketolytes monobactams carbapenems glycopeptides then uh, sulfones and streptogramins whereas b group of antibiotics which are uh, like uh, which can be used in case of public health concerns so they include the group of antibiotics like cephalosporins polymyxins and phenolones group c which can be used when the group d uh, the microorganisms they are not responding to group d group of antibiotics then group c we can go for uc that means this group of antibiotics include aminoglycosides like neomycin streptomycin amikacin amino penicillins like and uh, beta lactam combinations then cephalosporins all the first two uh, first and second generation cephalosporins then macrolides then amphenicol that is chloramphenicol thiamphenicol and fluorpenicol whereas d group of antibiotics which are mostly intended for veterinary use include tetracyclines beta lactamase resistant penicillins na narrow spectrum penicillin sulfonamides and nitrofuran derivatives now let us discuss about antimicrobial resistance antimicrobial resistance is nothing else but it's a therapeutic failure so coming to its definition what we can say is this antimicrobial resistance occurs when the microorganisms they become insusceptible to the applied micro antimicrobials for a period of time that means whatever the microorganisms against which we are using any antimicrobial agent over a period of time those microorganisms they will not be able to respond to that particular treatment so they become insusceptible because there will be development of either resistance or a resistant gene or there will be development of mutation so this antimicrobial resistance they can be classified into two categories that is multi drug resistance and superbugs so multi drug resistance this means that microorganisms are resistant to one or more antimicrobials for example we have seen about mrsa that is methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus or we vancomycin resistant microorganisms so uh, so this uh, multi drug resistant microorganisms means these microorganisms they have gained resistance against more than one antimicrobials whereas superbug means these are the microorganisms which have developed resistance towards most of the antimicrobials which are available so these superbugs includes mostly like in veterinary practice we can see e coli and staphylococcus which are the causative agent for mastitis they are the major concern and they are the most important superbugs before discussing about this uh, slide we as we know that what exactly uh, we need to know what exactly has led to this antimicrobial resistance so all of us we know that in judicious use of antibiotics whether in case of human beings or veterinary practices that has led to the emergence and persistence and spread of antimicrobial resistance so being a veterinarian it's our duty to monitor the antimicrobials so that we can essentially curb the uh, resistance in case of veterinary practices and it is also important for all of us to know that antimicrobial agents or anti uh, which have uh, gained antimicrobial resistance uh, that we need to look after it very carefully why we need to know about these things carefully because antimicrobial resistance it is a multifaceted problem and its containment requires one health approach so what do we mean by one health approach it means that all of us we have to uh, work together that is inter uh, its one health approach is a uh, interdependence of all human beings uh, animals and environment now let us see about the present scenario regarding antimicrobial resistance 
so this is a graphical representation where i have presented that how what is the death attributed by 2050 so actually asia is uh, like uh, this is like uh, that this is the color of the graph where we can see mortality per 10000 of the population so here asian country you can appreciate that it is dark blue color so presently it is around 4 lakhs uh, that uh, for, uh, due to antimicrobial resistance but by the year 2050 it is going to expand up to almost like uh, more than 80 lakhs this is a graphical representation here like we have i have categorized or we have seen that there are different causative organisms uh, causative uh, factors which results in death but out of all these antimicrobial resist uh, resistance it is a global pandemic which is like every year uh, it is around 70 uh, 7 lakhs of the people they are uh, dying out of this antimicrobial resistance and there is a continuous uh, increase in this amr death and it is uh, projected that by the end of 2050 it is going to reach up to 10 million death same thing here in terms of world gdp so world gdp by the year 2050 here you can see that there will be decline by approximately 100 trillions and like uh, in the uh, gdp there will be every year there is 2 to 3.5 percent decline with a fall in the livestock percent by 3 to 8 percent now this is a pictorial representation where we can appreciate different uh, spheres so here this is actually this graph it represents the antimicrobial consumption per country in the year 2090 and its projected increase or use in the year 2030 so this solid or the uh, solid circles they represents the data in the year 2017 whereas this blue outer line or sphere it uh, it uh, corresponds to the projected increase in the consumption of antimicrobials by the year 2030 so here we can see this we are mostly concerned being indian we are mostly concerned about the asian continent so here we can appreciate that by 2017 more than 50000 tons antimicrobial consumption has taken place and like the projected increase is like uh, in only in from india it is estimated that by 2030 it will be more than 7% so here this is a pictorial representation where we can appreciate the top 10 consumers of veterinary antimicrobials country so here we can see that india stands at the fifth position this open bar it represents the data in 2017 whereas this closed bar it represents the data in the year 2030 so we can see that the projected increase uh, in anti veterinary antimicrobial consumption only by india is more than 7% by 2030 so if we take the projected consumption of this veterinary antimicrobials by all the top 10 consumers it is going to be more than 72% now as my topic of discussion or my topic of presentation is use of phytobiotics as an alternative to contain antimicrobial resistance in small ruminants so many of us we will be having a confusion that what exactly is phytobiotics and so we need and we may get confused with probiotics and prebiotics so let us have a brief uh, definition or, or brief light over the probiotics and prebiotics probiotics actually these are the living microorganisms these microorganisms may be either bacteria or yeast and they are mostly available as a food supplement for example whatever the curd or yogurt or coconut water we consume they they are high reach uh, they are the high source of probiotics and generally they support the treatment or they are used as a treatment protocol for diarrhea or if there is any irritable bowel syndrome or any intestinal infection in that situation we can go for using this probiotics now let us uh, discuss about prebiotics so generally prebiotics they are non living non digestible by human and actually they serves as a food for the whatever the beneficial uh, gi microbiota is there this serves as a food for the gi microbiota so we can and mostly they are available in various food supplements for example garlic they contain prebiotics then banana they are the resource of prebiotics so generally these prebiotics they help in digestion and may support the treatment of several chronic digestive dis disorders so these prebiotics and probiotics together we can say it as a symbiotic 
so as i uh, as we have discussed or i i have shared with you the global scenario regarding the antimicrobial resistance so now all of us we are like our prime aim is to find out the alternate strategies to combat this antimicrobial resistance so this is like from one of the very good publication where i have got this alternate strategies to combat anti uh, antimicrobial resistance out of this i'll be discussing about this medicinal plants and phytochemicals because this medicinal plants or phytochemicals they, we know that india is the golden mine of this herbs and medicinal plants and more than 80% of the indian uh, like um, Uh, indian uh, 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 india is covered up with the forest land so we have we are having a rich source of flora and fauna which can be a rich source of medicinal plants and phytochemicals so mostly this medicinal plants and phytochemicals and this essential oils which comes under this phytochemicals they target uh, this and um, uh, this uh, antimicrobial resistant enzymes and thereby they help they possess this antimicrobial property and they help in containing the antimicrobial resistance so let us start to, with discussion with this medicinal plant or phytobiotics or phytochemicals so phytochemicals or phytobiotics actually these are the plant uh, this uh, most of the plants they produce an extensive array of organic compounds and these organic compounds what they produce is generally by the process of secondary metabolism and they are meant for their defense against the various uh, attack by the various predators mostly they contains these alkaloids glycosides saponins and polyphenols so we can this phytochemicals we can say as a phytobiotics or plant derived substances so this plant derived substances or phytobiotics they are uh, already there there are many reports where they have shown that they possess antimicrobial activity against wide range of microorganisms so this is a pictorial representation where we can see the classification of these phytochemicals so these phytochemicals include carotenoids so these are the examples then alkaloids phenolic compounds and organosulfurs out of all these phytochemicals the phytochemicals which possess antimicrobial property includes alkaloids essential oils phenolic compounds and flavonoids so that we will be discussing one by one in detail that how they are going to be helpful for us in containing the antimicrobial resistance so this is one of one of a good publication so here we can see uh, i have gone through this publication and why i have shared this screenshot because we can uh, in this uh, publication they have said about that phytochemicals as antibiotic alternatives to promote growth and enhance host health okay now we know that in small animal uh, sector particularly sheep and goat they they we consider as a food producing animal so for food producing animal mostly the prime aim is to have a growth promo uh, growth and uh, like uh, for enhancement of growth so that we can uh, we can consume them for meat or milk purpose so here to enhance the growth earlier antibiotic growth promoters they were used but because of the use of antibiotic growth promoters as the now the present scenario is they have resulted in the development of antimicrobial resistance so how they have resulted because these antibiotic growth promoters they uh, they uh, they are having some residues in milk and meat and when this uh, milk or meat they are consumed by the human beings they have resulted in development of uh, in uh, that is like injudicious use in human beings and it has resulted in the development of antimicrobial resistance so these phytochemicals now like most of the company uh, most of the researcher or academicians they are targeting these phytochemicals because uh, that because we are uh, we are targeting the reverse pharmacology and here phytochemicals they are easily available and they can be used as alternatives for these antibiotic growth promoters because this antibiotic growth promoters they are of uh, major concern and because of this major concern they have resulted in the quest for the novel alternates uh, uh, it has resulted that most of the academician and researcher they are questing for the novel alternative search or replacement for this antibiotic uh, growth promoters 
uh, in this uh, article they have discussed and they have said that uh, phytochemicals like essential oils or some of the flavonoids and polyphenolic compounds they have increased the animal performance and innate immunity for example in this publication they have discussed that cinnamaldehyde eugenol carvacrol or thymol which are the which belongs to the essential oil category of phytoconstituents they mostly have antimicrobial property and antioxidant property and because of their antimicrobial or antioxidant property they can stabilize the intestinal microbiota and thereby they can reduce the microbial toxic metabolites and thereby they enhances the growth performance of the animals in this publication apart from this is another publication where they have discussed about the dietary inclusion of various phytochemicals as a growth promoters in animal production so here they have the authors they have discussed about various herbs and spices like thyme oregano garlic ginger cumin cinnamon actually these uh, herbs and uh, spices is these are commonly available in our kitchens and like uh, this can be easily included in our diet resources uh, easily included in our diet day to day diet so they can they possess this antimicrobial activity and they possess this antioxidant activity and because of that they can stabilize the intestinal microbiota and re they can reduce the microbial toxic metabolite apart from that they are having very good activity against inflammatory biomarkers and they modify the rumen function and metabolic activity so in the same publication i have got this schematic representation of mechanism of action how these phytochemicals they can be incorporated as a feed additive to enhance the growth performance so here you can see that these phytochemical feed additives they possess this antioxidant and antimicrobial property apart from that they are having flavor flavor enhancing property so because of this flavor enhancing property they can increase the palatability of the feed additives moreover because of this antioxidant and antimicrobial property the uh, this because of this antioxidant property there will be decrease oxidative processes or there will be decrease oxidative stress in the animal and this uh, antimicrobial property they will like uh, improve the fermentation rate of various volatile fatty acids and they can modulate the rumen microbiota apart from that they can act as prebiotic and they possess this anti inflammatory activity so these can improve the nutrient digestion and absorption because here in this publication i have seen that they have administered garlic as a phytochemical feed additive and after administration what they have seen is they have gone for the histomorphology of the gi uh, small intestine and there in histomorphological structure they have seen that the gi uh, microvilli the uh, it has increased in the length so because of increase in the length of the microvilli what happens is the air absorption area gets increased and thereby there is very good absorption or very good activity because more um, there will be increased secretion of digestive juices and digestive enzymes which will in enhance the growth perform increase the feed intake and thereby it will in uh, increase or enhance the feed conversion ratio and in it will in enhance the quality and self life of the meat thereby finally it is going to enhance the growth performance and meat quality of the animals so here the same publication they have classified these few phytoconstituents which can improve the food status and intake and they can be used as a phytochemical feed additive which can enhance the growth promoter so among this it includes naringenin resveratrol genistein thymol eugenol carvacrol why i am discussing all these things because these are evidently available in our dietary sources this cinnamaldehyde it is present in cinnamon that is cinnamic acid cinnamon then this quercetin it is mostly present in our onion red onion red wine grapes uh, so these as these are easily available and these are the dietary sources of phytochemicals so that's why i'm discussing about all these things so that is like how we can contain the amr so for the there is strategy that we can go for alternative use of 
uh, alternative strategies like medicinal plants. So these medicinal plants, how they can help us in containing the AMR? First thing is, we know that these phytoconstituents, they are being used as growth promoters, as feed additive supplements. So thereby there also we can curb or we can contain the use of antimicrobials or we can reduce the amount of antimicrobials and thereby we can as these phytoconstituents they possess antibacterial anti uh, immunomodulatory activity we can contain the antimicrobial resistance and then a transfer of this like residue uh, antibiotic residues to the human consumers. So here, this is a summarized list of various uh, phytochemicals, their sources and the target pathogens against which and what is their mode of action. So here, like berberine, it is obtained from berberis species and it is its mode of action is it can prevent the cell division or protein or DNA synthesis. It can act as DNA synthesis inhibitor. Similarly, recently, I think most of the field vets and most of us, we have seen the cases of LSD lumpy skin disease. And it it was a like, it it was less, uh, It we can't say it's a pandemic, but it was like uh, next to pandemic only for a veterinary sector. So they are like uh, for control of this uh, LSD also, instead of going for any vaccines or any antimicrobial agents here like what we have done is we have used the uh, juice of aloe vera and this um, giloy that is tyrospora cordifolia these two are having very good antimicrobial property and their juices were like fed to the animals and the animals started showing recovering within three to four days and that uh, their uh, juice or their like um, leaves and uh, aloe vera gels they can be made into the paste and that paste can be applied over the skin lesions in LSD cases and that skin eruptions they got subsided within after three to four days of application of this paste. So that's what what I mean to say is uh, we even though there are a lot of antibiotics available but it is our prime duty that instead of going for this use of antibiotics as a immediate uh, treatment protocol what we can do is whatever in our uh, locality the phytochemicals or the medicinal plants are available we can go for uh, using it as a trial and error and we can see its efficacy in controlling various condition in case of human beings also suppose if we are suffering from any cold or like cough my suggestion is we should not go for immediately taking azithromycin. Uh, it's better to like, uh, because our body is having such type of inherent property where we can resist these things. And if at all uh, possible, go for using the herbs or like uh, spices and condiments which are commonly available in our kitchen. So same thing is here, like, let us discuss about what are the different mechanism of uh, action of these phytobiotics, how they produce their antimicrobial agents, uh, uh, they act as antimicrobial agent. So the first mechanism is they are going to interfere with the bacterial cell wall synthesis. Next is they can disrupt the cell membrane permeability, they can interfere with the bacterial physiology, they can inhibit the efflux pump, all these things I will be showing we, you with a pictorial representation. So this is the same thing, how these uh, like phytochemicals, they can promote the microbial cell wall disruption and finally the cell lysis and thereby finally how they will result in antimicrobial activity. As I have already said that among all the phytoconstituents, flavonoids, polyphenolic compounds, essential oils and alkaloids, they possess uh, the potent antibacterial property. So what is the antibacterial mechanism of flavonoids? The first one is they, they can act as nucleic acid synthesis inhibitor. They can cause alteration in the cytoplasmic membrane function. They can alter the energy metabolism. They can cause reduction in the cell attachment and biofilm formation. They will also inhibit the porins on the cell membrane they will cause change in the membrane permeability and mostly they will cause change in, uh, they will cause cytoplasmic membrane damage. And this may be mainly because of generation of hydrogen peroxide radicals. So here, this is a pictorial representation. I will just explain one by one what we need to discuss here. So here you can see, this is one, one means here, these phytoconstituents or phytochemicals, 
they are going to produce antimicrobial activity by causing membrane disruption. So if there is membrane disruption, there will be leakage of the intracellular contents and there will thereby finally it will result in lysis of the microorganism. The second mechanism is inhibition of nucleic acid synthesis. So here, this is dihydrofolate reductase. We know that this enzyme plays an important role and this is uh, like uh, for the uh, synthesis of tetra. Uh, tetrahydrofolic acid and we know that tetrahydrofolic acid it is required by the uh, microbes for their growth and development and for the synthesis of various macromolecular proteins in their body so this dihydrofolate uh, so this phytoconstituents they can uh, inhibit this nucleic acid synthesis that, that is they will bind with this dihydrofolate enzyme reductase enzyme and thereby they will further prevent the formation of uh, various uh, macromolecules in microorganism. The second mechanism is they will interfere with the helicase enzyme. Here, these, uh, these phytoconstituents, they are going to inhibit uh, DNA gyrase enzyme. The third mechanism, this, these are the like quercetin, camphorol, or genistein. These phytoconstituents mostly they inhibit the bacterial virulence. We know that bacteria, they produce certain toxins, that is endotoxins. So these phytoconstituents, they inhibit the bacterial virulence by preventing or by neutralizing these toxins. Now here quercetin, naringenin, camphorol, chrysin, these phytoconstituents, uh, they are going to act by uh, like quorum sensing mechanism. They will impair the ability of the microbe to form biofilm. Next is here this fifth mechanism. It uh, like uh, here, these are epigenin, bicalin. These phytoconstituents, quercetin, these phytoconstituents, mostly they will inhibit the cell envelope synthesis. So we know that fatty acid synthase, this enzyme is required for the cell envelope synthesis. So these phytoconstituents, they are going to inhibit the, this enzyme, thereby they will inhibit the cell envelope synthesis in the microbes. Another thing is here, same thing is epigenin and quercetin. They will also inhibit this like uh, peptidoglycan synthesis by interfering with this uh, alanine, alanine dipeptidase or alanine, alanine synthetase enzyme, thereby peptidoglycan layer, they will, uh, the synthesis will get inhibited. Again, here like gal galangenin, this phytoconstituent also, it is going to interfere with the peptidoglycan synthesis. How it is going to interfere? It will mostly prevent the cross-linking of the peptidoglycan side chain. Next is your six like genistein, quercetin, uh, bacalin. These phytoconstituents mostly, they are the inhibitors of this efflux pump. So uh, like uh, how if this pump is inhibited, whatever the active in the, like antibiotics or anything is taken by the microorganism, they will not be thrown out of the bacterial cell and this microbial cell will succumb to lysis. Next is here like uh, next uh, various uh, lycochalcons. These chalcons also, they mainly interfere with the respiratory chain, which is in uh, like this. NADPH, NADP dependent cytochrome C reductase respiratory change and chain they mainly get involved and they interfere with the ATP generation. And here this uh, epicatechin, morine, quercetin, they mainly interfere with the ATP synthase enzyme and thereby they interfere with the electron transport chain in microorganisms. So that's what here, like whatever the micro um, antibacterial mechanism of flavonoids we have discussed. So this is a pictorial representation with the various phytoconstituents, uh, where exactly is their target site. Now, next thing I have said that essential oils also, they possess antimicrobial properties. So essential oils, what they do, they whatever the membrane associated structure proteins are there or fatty acids are there, Essential oils, they get incorporated and they cause change, structural change in this and they inhibit the argosterol synthesis. Apart from that, they also cause dysfunction of ribosomes. They cause leakage of intracellular electrolytes like calcium, potassium and magnesium. They cause breakage in DNA and gene expression and they also affect the cell membrane and cell wall of the microbes.
these phyto constituents whether they are used alone or in combination of with any antibiotic what they can they may they can produce some synergistic activity so our prime target to contain amr is if any phyto constituent or if any medicinal plant they can uh, they possess good antimicrobial property then we should go for uh, go for using it alone but suppose if it possesses antimicrobial property which is uh, like less as compared to the uh, other uh, phyto constituents then in that situation what we can do is we can go for combinational therapy so combinational therapy means combination of these phyto constituents with, along with antibiotics so here what what is the advantage of combining these two things we can get either synergistic activity first thing second thing is we can reduce the amount of or the concentration or the doses of antibiotic required thereby we can reduce the antimicrobial resistance indirectly so this phytobiotics there are so many scientific evidences which have demonstrated that antimicrobial activities of this phytobiotics mostly they are mediated through their ability to enhance the host defense mechanism against the microbial infections another thing is why they show synergistic activity because they uh, they possess antioxidant property also so if we go for combination of this phytochemicals with antimicrobial agent they can exert synergistic activity so here this is one publication where they have studied the synergistic activity between quercetin and pseudomonas aeruginosa so here they have screened a uh, approximately some six uh, antimicrobial agents like levofloxacin ceftriaxon zentamicin amikacin and they have studied various protocol like biofilm inhibition assay time what is the time required for killing this microorganism what is the cell viability all these things the authors they have studied in this protocol and they have studied the cell culture properties also and uh, then they what they could find that this uh, quercetin it is having very good synergistic activity with whatever the tested antimicrobials uh, they have used yet for example levofloxacin ceftriaxone zentamicin whatever the antimicrobials they have used this quercetin is in increasing or enhancing its antimicrobial activity and it is causing more than 80% of the inhibition apart from that here they have also studied about the cytotoxic effect of this quercetin that whether it possesses any activity over the host cell or not so they could find that the quercetin is not having any cytotoxic effect similarly here another authors they have studied the effect of quercetin with uh, fluorpenicol against uh, this uh, aquaculture against aquatic microorganism that is aeromonas hydrophila so here also they have tested uh, uh, approximately 11 antimicrobial agents but they could find that quercetin in combination with fluorpenicol it is having very it is having bactericidal activity fluorpenicol in combination with this quercetin it can low uh, uh, in a dose dependent manner it can reduce the mic value up to 16 to 191 fold next is here another reference another study where that camferol which is another phyto constituent they have studied in combination with uh, colistin against gram negative bacteria and this is uh, like uh, same images so this first two image is the control image this is lower magnification this is higher magnification same thing is positive control and here camferol or phyto constituent alone but here when that camferol that is phyto constituent along with the colistin it was given here they could appreciate that it could inhibit the biofilm formation here you can see clearly that othering of the microorganisms that is disrupted here same thing this is another one uh, uh, study by uh, some authors so there they have studied the mechanism underlying quercetin along with tetracycline so here this is alone uh, like in uh, this is media alone that this is the same same picture and this is like uh, tetracycline uh, quercetin this is tetracycline this is quercetin plus tetracycline so here what they could find that tetra uh, quercetin and tetracycline in combination they cause cell membrane lysis and thereby it causes the uh, loss of intracellular content and lysis of complete bacteria so here we can appreciate that lysis of the cell membrane 
for another one publication this is by prasad at all so this actually uh, he is the he is my senior and the lab from where i have studied phd from that same lab so he had studied about quercetin with gallic acid quercetin with uh, anisic acid quercetin in combination with cinamic acid against various like uh, uh, fish pathogens that is aromenas hydrophila aromenas uh, salmorsida and then uh, this is uh, uh, this is e tarda these are the three fish pathogens and here he has seen the synergistic activity and he could find that the fic indices were very uh, between like uh, point Five to one, and if FIC indices is between point five to one, it indicates that the combination is having synergistic activity. As like I will not be discussing exactly here what is FIC indices and all. What I mean to by showing these publications, what I mean to say is there are so many works done by many workers, but still in this uh, in uh, in relation to small ruminants. There are very few reports, and that too, whatever the reports are available, they are only for uh, use. They are available only for the use of phytochemicals as growth promoters, not as antimicrobial agents. So we can work out in this field, and we can use this in our field conditions so that we can contain this and problem of antimicrobial resistance. Next is here. This is a like a uh, table of showing various flavonoids. In combination of with various antimicrobial agents uh, against various strains that they have shown the synergistic activity. Same thing is here. These are the various flavonoids along with different antimicrobial agents uh, against different antimicrobial uh, against various microorganism strains. Uh, what are those? Uh, in combination, their uh, like studies have been reported. So, like, if anyone who is interested to know about more about this phytochemical research and all, these are the databases which is available for searching the various uh, properties and uh, activities related to medicinal plants. Indians, we are known for this traditional knowledge of medicine. And that too, in our home or day-to-day -day life, we all practice this traditional knowledge. So, if this traditional knowledge we can uh, incorporate in our like uh, veterinary sector, what we can do is we can contain the antimicrobial resistance. How we can contain the antimicrobial resistance? Because this traditional medicines or whatever the like um, ethno veterinary practices are available, that uh, whatever the phytoconstituents are there, they contain secondary metabolites. These secondary metabolites are nothing else but they are polyphenolic compounds, flavonoids, alkaloids, essential oils. And we have seen that they are mainly, uh, these secondary metabolites, they are having various targets in the microbial cell that we have seen that they cause disruption of the cell membrane function. They, inter they interfere with the inter intermediary metabolism. They are going to interfere with the efflux transporter mechanism so these metabolites they can they are having multiple targets in the microbial cell first thing second thing as this secondary metabolite they possess multiple target so the chances of gaining resistance by microorganism has uh, it, it 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 is it becomes less another thing is but one constraint with this use of uh, medicinal plant is bioavailability as we know that bioavailability is the total available fraction which is present in the plasma to show the therapeutic effect. So uh, for this oral bioavailability for this plant secondary metabolite, it is less. So what we need to do is these things need to be converted into some nano formulations or some other type of feasible formulations, which can be easily available for field conditions. And then it can be uh, practiced in the field condition to contain the antimicrobial resistance. So from the pres uh, today's presentation, I would like to share a few take home messages. That is, we know that all of us, we know that antimicrobial resistance, it is a global pandemic and it is a major, it is a matter of public health concern. So the thing is, we need to look out for the alternatives against this antimicrobial agent and that to that and alternatives or alternate strategies to contain this antimicrobial resistance should be from natural sources. So these natural sources means medicinal plants we can look after because these medicinal plants, they contain phytoconstituents or phytobiotics, which are plant-derived substances 
which are having multiple targets in the microbial cells and they possess antibacterial, antioxidant and immunomodulating activity. So these phytobiotics alone also, as well as in combination with known antibiotics, they can produce the synergistic action and they can thus reduce the antibiotic doses. So thereby we can contain the antimicrobial resistance. Why, how we can contain? Because these phytobiotics or these uh, plant-derived secondary molecules, they are rich in flavonoids and phenolics. And we know that flavonoids, phenolics, and essential oil, they possess potent antibacterial activity. So last message, handle antimicrobials with care. Thank you.